Welcome back. Today I'll be talking about the Beta panel, which is a high-end mini display and sensor panel that runs entirely off a single USB 2.0 cable. And it's compatible with both Windows and Linux, which means it's also compatible with the Raspberry Pi and other SBCs as well. Now this video is a response to some previous videos I made on this low-cost budget sensor panel that's pretty good for the price but is lacking some useful features. For example, I received several comments from people asking if it can be used as a secondary monitor, if it can display videos, or if it was compatible with ADA64. But unfortunately, this budget panel can't do any of these things. That's why I thought it would be a good idea to show a premium panel that can do all these things and more. And like I just said, it runs entirely off a single USB 2.0 cable. Unlike competing high-end panels that require both an HDMI cable and a power cable, which can be pretty annoying, especially if you're planning to place the panel inside your PC. The fact that the Beta panel runs on USB 2.0 instead of USB-C also guarantees wide compatibility with any device that has USB, which is pretty impressive considering the limited bandwidth of USB 2.0. It's able to accomplish this because it has an ARM-based computer inside the display, with 8GB of internal storage, and it even has Wi-Fi support. This means that it can act as a standalone device, simply transfer any photo or video to its internal storage, connect it to a power source, and it'll automatically start playing your loaded videos and pictures. The Beta panel is available in multiple versions including a circular design and various rectangular models including 3.5 inch, 4.3 inch, 5 inch, ultra wide 6.8 inch models, and a 7 inch version that also includes a touchscreen. Most of these models are high quality IPS displays, and some even offer a high color space IPS which provides outstanding color gamut performance. As far as FPS goes, most models provide a 30Hz refresh rate, but this varies between models as you can see here. Now in terms of construction, most models are built with an open frame and back plate. If you're planning to put the panel inside your PC, then you'll likely want to get one of these. But a few models also offer an aluminum case option like the one I have. These cost a little more, but the enclosure feels extremely sturdy, and you'd have a hard time damaging this thing even if you tried. If you're interested in purchasing the Beta panel, I included a sponsored link in the video description, which is a great way to help support the channel and get a good deal on a premium mini display. Now let's go over some of the ways the Beta panel can be used. I'll start with Windows, and then I'll show how to use it with Linux and the Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned earlier, the Beta panel is compatible with ADA64 and configuring it is super easy. All you need to do is connect it to your PC, go to ADA64's preferences, go down to the LCD section, search for Beta panel from the list, and then check this box to enable Beta panel support. Now click on LCD items where you can customize and create your own theme or import one that you downloaded online. Now there's already some good tutorials on other channels showing how to create your own theme, so I won't be getting into that. Instead, I downloaded some user-made themes that I found on Ada64's forum. To import a theme, simply click the Import button, and make sure to change the filter to allow all files. Then you can select a downloaded theme. I'll start with this cyberpunk theme. But, as you can see, the scaling is a little small, and I'm not sure if this theme's creator designed it for a different resolution, so let's try a different theme. This one fits the screen perfectly, so now hit Apply to start streaming it to the panel. And as you can see, it looks great. As far as the statistics go, everything looks correct. Temperatures, memory usage, CPU utilization, all these statistics are correct. However, you'll need to change the labels for your particular hardware. For example, I'm not running a 5800X 3D CPU. I'm actually running a 5900X. So to change that, all you need to do is select the label here and then click Modify. Then you can enter your particular CPU model here. 
So now let's move on to how to access the display's internal storage. The beta panel comes with software to do this. Simply run this program, then hit continue. Alternatively, there's also a browser-based utility which can mount the panel's storage. To use this method, simply enter this address here in your browser, then mount the storage. This utility can also be used to update the panel's firmware. After mounting the device, the first thing you'll want to do is go to the console folder, then modify this file here. If you don't run ADA64, then by default the panel will display a clock when it's powered on. To change this so that it plays media files instead of the clock, simply comment out this section, then uncomment the following section here. If you leave the settings the way they are, then the display will automatically start playing your images first with 5 second intervals before starting your videos, and will continue to loop through all of them. If you want it to only play the videos, modify the location like you see here. You can also change the screen's brightness and rotation setting here as well. Next, go to the album folder, then the video folder. I'm gonna delete the preloaded videos and instead transfer my own video, which is of Titanfall 2 gameplay. Now that it's done transferring, I'll eject the storage, unplug the panel, then plug it back in, and it'll automatically start playing the video. In my experience, certain video formats might be too demanding for its CPU, so I suggest re-encoding your videos using less intensive codecs such as MPEG-2 instead of more modern ones such as H.264 or 265. Then be sure to use the display's native resolution for smoother playback. Now the beta panel can also be configured as a secondary monitor. The included PDF file has the instructions on how to install the driver which is fairly easy to do, but since this is a customized display driver that runs over USB, it requires a few extra steps. In a nutshell, you'll need to modify a registry file, then reboot with driver signature enforcement disabled, then go to the device manager and install the provided driver. After doing this, Windows will recognize the beta panel as a secondary display. It works surprisingly good and I was able to view YouTube videos without any issues, and the playback is very smooth. But something to keep in mind is that if you install this driver, then you won't be able to use it with ADA64 or access its internal storage. So you'll need to uninstall this driver first before you can access those features again. Now let's go over how to use the beta panel as a secondary display with Linux and the Raspberry Pi. There's actually two different drivers available. One is based on the older frame buffer subsystem, and the other driver is based on the more modern DRM. Chances are you'll want to use DRM, so let's go over that now. Here I'm running the official Raspberry Pi OS on a Raspberry Pi 5. I included the link to these instructions in the video description. All you need to do is copy and paste these two boxes of code and then the system will recognize it as a secondary display. Again, I'll test it out by watching one of my YouTube videos, and as you can see it performs extremely well, and playback is very smooth. This same process also works on a desktop Linux PC as well. The only difference is, if you're running a newer distro such as Ubuntu 24.04, then you'll want to clone this repo with this command here but the rest of the commands will be the same. Here I'm running Kubuntu 24.04, and as you can see there's no issues recognizing it as a secondary monitor. So that pretty much covers all the different ways you can utilize the beta panel. I'll also include a link in the video description to this article here, which contains more technical details of the beta panel if you're interested in learning more about it. And again, if you're planning to purchase one then be sure to use my sponsored link which is also down in the video description. If you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment, and also like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.